Okay, we're dynamoing Andy's 2019. You can see brake ABS slider on because it's mad that we're on the dyno. All the collision is all mad. But anyway, we're gonna see what it makes. We are back on the dyno with yep. your truck and since the last time it was on the dyno we did what head studs and cp4 yep 625 head studs and extra g 10 mil cp4.2 the head studs are the exact same as the earlier models uh the same part number for the 24 valves went right in yep there was no problems and we didn't even have to lash the valves no. with the hydraulic lifters it's kind of handy so uh we put it back on the dyno and we have now made four or five runs with the CP4 mm -hmm. pump and got all that we can get out of the stock injectors. And the final number is 671 horsepower. Happy so with it. So that is up from 633, 633. with the stock yep. pump. Um, so now next step is pull the injectors out. We're going to set them to Exergy and turn them into 100% overs. Put it back in the truck and then it should be at its final potential. Yes. So we found a couple of things with the CP4 uh, when it was off. Um, there appears to be 24 teeth gear, uh, which the CP3s are a 36 tooth gear. So that would mean that this pump is overdriven from what the older or from what the CP3s are. It's quite and, a bit overdriven. Yeah. Um, so that gives the pump actually significantly more, uh, better flow numbers at 3,500 RPM than what they would be on even some of the Duramaxes and the fours that they run these pumps on. And these are a six millimeter, um, stroke, uh, which is actually a little bit smaller than some of the Chevys and the Fords. I think they, they start off at like an eight, they said. Uh, yes. Should yeah, I can't eight. remember. Um, but they pick up the volume by over over driving the CP4. Mm -hmm. And now the Exergy has turned this into a 10 mil stroke. Uh, mm -hmm. They're thinking this pump might be able to support a thousand horsepower. Uh, so obviously with the 100% overs probably won't get us there and the 472 won't quite get us there. But for really, originally we were shooting for 800 horsepower, but we mm -hmm. might get closer to 900 horsepower judging. I guess we just won't counter eggs before they have. Yep, we won't say anymore. <laughs> we'll just let it take its course. So we're so. gonna pull the injectors out. Uh, get them up to Exergy. Uh, they're going to turn these things around for us and get them back in the truck and we'll put it back on the dyno and yep. break your 68 RFE for sure. Still stock. <laughs> Not for long. That's something we're going to have to address yes. one of these times. But there's one still a couple them. things. Uh, I've been talking to Randy Reyes and a couple of the guys that have done some of the 19 stuff and they're having some problems with controlling the lockup the external lockup solenoid and they're getting really harsh shifts on the built 2019s. Uh, so we've been just seeing what we can kind of wait in a little bit to see if uh, we can come up with some res solutions for some of those problems and we'll build it and we can go smack it down the drag strip and see what it'll do. Be happy with that. Cool. Stay tuned for more. All right. So today we have a truck that came in here, no seven and a half, six, seven with uh, no, no crank, no start. So I figured out there was a wire that was pulled that came out of the back side of the tip -um, um, and in that connector we had a lot of green corrosion. So I did kind of a temporary fix without replacing the plug, got my dash working and figured out that we don't have any power to the to the ECM. So I'm in the process of swapping over a known good tip -um, and um, we will see if we can get power to the ECM because we're cranking and it's not starting so far.
day we put the new headlights in up front and I put the new uh, light switch in here. I had to take that panel apart. There was a problem in the actual switch that was keeping those headlights from coming on. But now I've got all the lights wired and Cody's uh, fabbing some brackets for the front flood, flood lights. Can't even talk, flood lights on the bottom. I am fixing some wiring. My mice got in the wires up here. I actually ate the coating off the wires, just with some bare wires, and I'm fixing this up here and also wiring in the radio while I'm at it. And I'll get to get the shot back up here and they got a whole nest of papers and stuff up in this hood, or up in the cab. So it's fun stuff up here and a whole wire nest of wires that I'm fixing. Here you can see how the mice ate all the wire and this was on a constant 12 volt power so luckily it wasn't touching anything bare it was just laying on this plastic shroud so I found another 12 volt power where it came up from the main power and I'm using one for the radio and I have another one that I'm going to tie all the way into the interior cab light and fix this then if you look down here that's where the yummy mice nest is that we have to vacuum out and get all that stuff cleaned out these are Kimball Midwest crimp uh, crimp connectors and then we've got the heat shrink that melts on the inside and makes a completely weatherproof connection and we've had pretty good luck with this because a lot of times if you get the uh, crimp and seal connector and then when you crimp through the connector itself it actually punctures down through the connector and it can when you heat shrink it I've seen it still have some bare um, part of the connector that can actually grow some corrosion so this way you can crimp it nice solid easy and then put the uh, good heat shrink over it that seals up and you can see the the sealant that oozes out from behind it and it makes a good solid weather tight seal The next step is I'm going to be putting the replacement door panels in here and along with down here. So I got to take all those rivets out and then the new ones pop in. I got to take the door handles loose and uh, get this fitted in back in line. And the doors will look much better. Then I got to clean up all the door seals and put new seals in the doors. Okay, got the floor in. Uh, this is a pre cut kit from Fur uh, F E H R is where we got this from. This is a little bit tricky because it goes around, it's got cab mounts that stick up so you have some padding underneath to try to get it as flat as possible but rather than having the cab mount bolts stick up through they go over it and there's just, it's like, you know, a little bit of wave in it but it'll mat down once we get some heat in it and I had to take this panel off to get it down underneath the seat and fit this up underneath this panel. Uh, but we got the interior pretty much ready to put the seat back in. I've got the rear window seal in and I've got the radio going so I'm pretty much ready to put the seat in I'm gonna clean this back up again and I got to get the blower motor working 